So I decided to put together some new resolutions for the new year, 2023. And I want to share them with you because I think this is a good chance to be accountable and just to kind of get it out there so you guys can have an idea on what I'm basically looking at and what I'm trying to do going forward. And this is kind of my overall kind of thing that I'm kind of, you know, basing the early parts of the year to like this is kind of a rough three to six month kind of um guardrail to kind of give me some good structure going into a new year and again some things might fall by the wayside but this kind of gives me an easy recommended dose i can take that can i can get off because a lot of this stuff is like stuff that's in my control stuff that isn't my control but stuff that i can easily just action off before 12 a.m in the morning or 12 p.m so in the afternoon so this is my new year's eve so new year's resolution for 2023 number one read 100 books number two get 50,000 subscribers on youtube number three run 20 miles per week number four maintain a weight of 200 pounds all year Number five, we'll do one hour of language learning per day. And number six, write and publish one blog post per day, which is obviously starting on a Monday. So if you haven't watched it already, you, you definitely see some of these already. So number one, reading 100 books a day, 100 books a day for the year. I know this sounds a bit nuts, but always, you know, you need to understand that I already find reading quite easy anyway. So it's not that much of an issue. At my peak, which was maybe a few years ago, it might have been three years ago, I was reading four books a month. At this pace, I think I'd need to get through about eight, I think a month to kind of make this work, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just double check. I think I calculated the other day. Let me just see. Eight uh, times 12. Whoops. Yeah, so basically more than that, mate. Maybe 10. Oof. 10? No, it's not. It'd be nine. So maybe about eight. Maybe about eight in a bit. Maybe I ain't a bit and I might cheat at the end of it and just bang out a couple of flipping short pamphlet books to kind of get it over the line. But I was already reading four, so I just got to double it and read eight plus maybe a few more at the end of the month. So it's not at the end of the year. So it's not too bad. Like I said, I've already got a good base of reading. It's also not like I'm coming into this completely blank. I was reading, you know, 50, you know, four books a month for a serious stretch of time i'm thinking like five years consecutively so it's not that big of a deal in that regard the 50,000 subscribers on youtube i also think it's a bit of a stretch goal it's a bit out there but i think i can do it at the moment i speak to you right now at the beginning of the year um sunday the 1st of january 2023 i'm currently sitting on if i check my youtube studio i'm currently sitting on 17,230 subscribers which is a far distance away from 50 but still a general kind of thing that i can kind of achieve the run 20 miles per week is going to be difficult on my current weight because obviously running when you're a bit bigger is always hard but i also have done this prior i think my consistent mileage per week when i was really running a lot was around 16 to 20 miles per week i was doing on a consistent basis i also cheated a little bit because at that time this is pre-pandemic maybe 2018 ish around that time i think you can probably find me on strava and see some of that data but around that time i was also working in like you know central london and stuff so that afforded me the opportunity every sometimes every friday every wednesday i'd run home from work which is basically you know maybe eight miles or so maybe six eight maybe six to eight miles which obviously is a good way to kind of get loads of managing in a week without having to go run you know um have to do loads of runs to make up that 20 miles a week so now i don't have that cheat i'm gonna have to go out more often so i may have to go out like three to four times or maybe five to run to kind of get that mileage in, or just do one big one i don't really know to maintain 200 pounds a year is definitely something that i want to kind of this is one of my biggest goals because i think i've shown you many times on here i've dropped weight many many times i've kind of gone up and down yo-yoed a lot like oprah and but i've never really maintained it for a long time i think the longest i've maybe maintained it was maybe have been four months or so in terms of a solid amount like you know consistently back to back and obviously maintaining it i feel like is a lot harder also than losing it because maintaining it also means i'm gonna have to make some healthy lifestyle choices i'm gonna have to maybe avoid partying as much as i would like avoid getting on it as much as i like to kind of maintain that level because a lot of the stuff that would lead me to making room correct decisions would be tied to the fact that i would kind of be you know waking up hungover and whatnot and ordering uber eats and all that sort of malarkey that would obviously not help the whole working out vibe because you know if you're working out Monday to friday you're going out and you're eating crap on the weekends it kind of negates a lot of the work you did in the week especially if you're doing it every single weekend so that's something i'm definitely looking forward to the one like one hour language learning is definitely something i'm also really looking forward to this is going to be most likely going to be spanish 
um, that I'm going to be doing because I've got a decent base in that already. And then obviously I'll probably sprinkling some French as well because I've got, you know, I used to speak that when I was a kid, but unfortunately I lost it in an effort to kind of fit into this blood clot country and not get bullied. But I also, you know, I'm sure once I start learning it, I'll reactivate my flipping French speaking gene. So that should be good. And write and publish one blog post per day. So this is what I'll be using to kind of do my one blog post per day. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And this is mostly just to kind of get a lot of the stuff that I think about on record. I'm a, I don't know. I think I kind of miss having that ability to sort of look back on some of my thoughts um, regarding the scene, regarding culture, regarding art, regarding music and whatnot, fashion, and sort of see what I was kind of thinking on record. Just because sometimes I feel like if I didn't talk about it on the podcast, it doesn't necessarily exist. I'm not exactly sharing all my views on Twitter all the time either. So a good way to kind of share my opinion and kind of put my hat in the ring and sort of get me to a level that I want to be a certified tastemaker in, in this thing is obviously to get this blog kept it updated and whatnot and obviously see where that goes. So these are the things I'm currently doing. Um, the response has been funny. I've seen some people obviously saying, yeah, go on, do your thing. There's been a few people that have been, you know, mocking me and laughing and stuff, which has been quite hilarious because I feel like when you put up resolutions, it's sort of similar to when if you're a bigger dude and you start saying you want to work out, immediately you start getting people you know getting at you and replying with messages and offering you unsolicited advice in terms of what work how you should do what diet you should be on and it's always nonsense right they never know what they're talking about but there's a lot of people kind of you know acting like they do and i felt like you know this new resolution sort of vibe is similar because for in my head sometimes when i think about it it's more fun, I feel like, personally for me. Again, I'm somebody that's a heavy detractor, right? I'm really in the flipping dark side field, DSP community of detractors. I'm on Kiwi Farms, all that stuff. I'm looking at that stuff. I'm looking at all the wing stuff. I'm looking at all the low tier God stuff. I'm involved in that. I'm really intrigued by those characters and how they're, you know, just able to kind of go through life blissfully unaware of why people dislike them and just continually scamming fans and being horrible human beings, but still striving and succeeding in some way, shape, or form, which, in my opinion, in, my striving success barrier is very low right because it, it mostly comes from being not able to work a nine to five because i've been doing that most of my life even though i have all these creative endeavors that i would like to do there's never been a period in my life where i've haven't had a full-time job i've always had to have one because that was what i relied on in terms of consistent kind of pay to pay rent to pay my lifestyle whatever it may be so when i see these demonstrably horrible people able to strive despite their obvious character defaults and personality defaults and um just whatever they do and they make no real effort to change also which is also something that's fascinating i love that about them dsp wings of redemption low tier god it's not even like they're open to the idea of changing how they navigate through life or how they treat people or how they come across or change the perception of what how they come across they don't care they don't care they're unaware they're blissfully unaware they pretend they're unaware whatever it may be it's just really interesting regardless i feel like it's a far more enjoyable to laugh and point and snicker at those people i said snicker they'll say the other one it's far more enjoyable to snicker and laugh at them because they're you know quote-unquote failures like aside from the monetary, you know, gain and the ability to like not work a nine to five and support their family on, you know, streaming salary or whatever it may be, or every other part of their life is a complete failure because everybody looks at them like a joke, right? They kind of get laughed at from all sides of the internet outside their little hardcore group of fans and whales. No one really likes them. And I wouldn't really want to live that sort of life. So they're a legit failure. So it's more funny, I feel like, to laugh at those kind of guys because they're never going to change. So just enjoy the freak show. It's kind of like our weird internet sleuth version of the Kardashians, right? It's our kind of weird reality TV show that we get to watch in real time. But I felt like maybe it's just me. But if somebody is trying to get their life together and they generally aren't a, you know, a piece of crap, it's not that enjoyable to laugh at what they're trying to do. I wouldn't imagine. Right? I know there's some people online who are quite cringy. I stumbled across this one guy on Twitter the other day who was, you know, crying because he did a 10K, some fat dude who's now skinny, which is always the worst personality trait, right? When a guy is fat and then they lose a bunch of weight and they make losing weight their entire personality. It's just cringe. It's the same thing with a dude that loves pale ales, with the one that talks about flipping motorbikes, guys that love wearing flipping workwear, 
there's a particular kind of personality or person who kind of adopts those hobbies and lets it form their entire personality and that comes across on social and it's really cringe and obviously it's something you see a lot with weight loss you know a guy with a skinny body and a fat man's head it's annoying but it was still quite heartwarming so after the initial one to five seconds of you looking at him thinking oh well, you're cringe or a loser you immediately step into oh that's still quite good you went from being this fat docile um bedridden chair-ridden um recluse shutting to now you're doing these 10ks around your neighborhood even if you're walking really fast there's still a lot for a bigger dude to kind of go out there and put your body through that all that extraneous uh, cardiovascular work to the point where you're losing weight and you're making healthier lifestyle choices in terms of what you're eating and drinking congratulations bravo to you well done so it's hard to laugh that person because they're actually trying and they're doing it but when somebody that's not doing it it's doesn't it's not as fun so, so i look at people that are laughing my listen I'm like huh interesting thing to laugh about i wonder if it's just like a natural you know reaction to stuff like this because generally people don't think you're going to do it which is fine right if you don't think i'm going to do it fair enough but it doesn't necessarily matter if i do all of it or not really in the grand scheme of things because even if i do like two off this list it's still a hell of achievement at the end of the year to look back on aside from everything else i'm going to do in the next 12 months it's still quite a sick achievement but what it does like i said before is that it provides me with like guardrails it kind of gives me a, a minimum recommended list of things I need to do per day. And if I look at that list of stuff, aside from what am I looking at? Aside from maybe the 50 subs, 50,000 subs on YouTube and they're maintaining a weight of 200 pounds per year, the rest of the activities per day will basically mean I'll have to commit to what? F- maybe four to six hours per day on those things. Maybe a couple of hours of reading a day. Uh, one hour I'll spec out for working out, an hour again for the, you know, for the uh, language learning, and then an hour for the blog post, which are probably going to be sure, because I'm writing it on my own blog post, I'm not proofreading it to get published in the New York Times. So it's not that much, right? It's four to six hours per day you're committed to improving parts of your life that you feel like needed to improve, which are going to bring you some level of happiness, satisfaction, fulfillment, blah, 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 which is obviously stuff that's not quantifiable, but it still will make you feel good. And if anything, going into the new year wouldn't you want to feel better than you did in 2022 i know i would you know you, we can all make a lot of money you know money can be made fair that's cool um you can go on nicer fancier holidays you can buy fancier things but i don't know wouldn't you like just to feel better i had a lot of weird health stuff happen last year you know i had just a lot of mood stuff happen like just just whatever like everyone else has had in the world i'm not special just well, I would like to feel better next year. So if this stuff makes me feel better in some way, shape, or form, it's no harm, no foul play. And like I said, it, I just don't. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I, I wouldn't see it as a laughable thing to be as somebody that's trying to make a list. It's like I looked at somebody. Like a recent example would be like Lex Friedman. I checked out Lex Friedman, and he was posting some stuff about books he was reading, and the books he was reading were really, you know, a little bit cringe, a little bit corny. But that's Lex in it. He's a little bit, you know, he's on autism spectrum. Um, you know, he's that kind of dude. He's a turbo dork, so he's gonna do what he's gonna do. But after the initial one to five seconds of just laughing at him and his list, he's like, oh, that's commendable. You're going to go re- read all these classical books. So all these classic books, um, and, you know, you're going to probably gain something out of them for committing to reading them throughout the entire year and sharing your learnings with the internet. But people legitimately were mocking him and laughing at him, but more so just because of the list of what he's reading, not because of what he was trying to achieve in the year, which is definitely something that I didn't really, you know, pan, I didn't really maybe have in mind that people were going to do but you know the internet's got the internet so it is what it is but i thought it's an interesting reaction to somebody sharing a news resolution like yeah okay you're not going to do that oh, so okay maybe i won't but you know if i do it's still sick and even if i do it's like i'm going to come back and say ha I proved you wrong i did it it's just for myself it's not for anybody else i think everybody's noticed that i think or anybody knows this to be true when you first start working out i know for me especially being a former fatty when you first start working out especially if you're a lad you do it primarily to try and make yourself more attractive to the opposite sex that's what i did before i knew for a minute but half of the reason also was because i really wanted to fit in all the fashion clothes that i was into because i couldn't at that time i loved wearing like you know comedy gas on men sorry comedy gas on shirts junior watanabe shirts 
or come to go some shirt shirts, you know what I mean. Junior was love your stuff. I like the way neighborhood, I like the way double taps, I like the way bait back then, Supreme, and all them things. Nowadays it's different because I've seen the Supreme, even they have double XL. Back in the day, there's no such thing as a double XL. You have to get an XL, you have to kind of like stretch it out with your arms. If you're a former fat, you know what I'm going, you have to get a t shirt and like kind of like expand it to make it fit you and whatnot. The jackets and stuff sometimes work, but the t shirts are always a bit of a myth. So I just did it mostly, you know, again, half to get girls and half to kind of fit into clothes. But then once you start getting into it and it becomes like a lifestyle thing, you realize that it just brings you more satisfaction, especially if you're somebody like myself who kind of has undiagnosed, you know, um, non-specific sort of mental issues going on anyway. Carving out a day in your an hour per day or sometimes two per day where you get to kind of focus on the workout and not think about anything else in your life can do wonders for your mental health and whatnot and again it all becomes self it all becomes more selfish intentions as opposed to you know hey i want to attract people i want to wear cooler clothes to make myself look cooler it just becomes more so again how this makes me feel and whatnot and the things may be tied around it also because sometimes you feel like, you know, you make your best decisions when you're like kind of the workout mode guy because you sleep earlier, you're not up late, you're not drinking all the time, you're not doing lots of DRUGS and all that sort of malarkey. But hey, what can you do? Everyone's got their things. But if you have a list or whatever that you want to share, that, what you're going to get up to, let me know in the comments down below. If you're listening to this in the audio version, you know, email me. I'll put the link in of the email down below as well in the description so you can check it out. But I'd love to know what is your New Year's Eve resolutions going forward? Is it a list of things like I mentioned? Is it a theme that you're trying to, you know, carry into the new year? Are you asking yourself broad sweeping questions about yourself and whatnot? Are you trying to make one to two to three to four to five change lifestyle or life change relationship changes in your life going forward or you're just doing like probably what most people would do and just kind of keeping on keeping on and making sure you keep the lights on whatever it is let me know in the comments down below i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions